Welcome to Playhouse 2020. We're so happy to present to you Paul Slade Smith's topical comedy, The Outsider. Originally scheduled as a stage production for the now canceled fall season, it's too good a play to let go, especially in an election year. Therefore, here we are coming to you through the limited venue of Zoom. Please bear with a few odd annoyances, like random black boxes appearing on the screen. To minimize audio inconsistencies, turn your sound all the way up. And many thanks for joining us tonight. In these new strange times, we're grateful for the chance to connect with you, even if virtually. And now, sit back, relax, and enjoy The Outsider. Here, in here, Paige. listen to me, Dave, this is simple. If we're trying to convince people the man is their governor, if we want him to look like a governor, we put him in the governor's office. That's politics 101. In fact, even better, we put him behind the governor's desk. Am I right? Paige. Have you ever seen a more governor's desk, looking desk than this desk? No, it's perfect. We do the interview here. Right, except for the part where we're not doing an interview. We're doing an interview, Dave. No, I'm not putting on television again. Not today. Okay, but you have to put them on television again today. I, I can't. Not again. I hear what you're saying. Good. You're saying that because the swearing-in ceremony didn't go well this morning. Okay, can we not talk about the swearing-in ceremony? Oh, why would we not talk about the swearing-in ceremony? Okay, can we not talk about why we're not talking about the swearing-in ceremony? Dave, I think you asked me here for my advice. I asked you here because uh, there's no one else here. I have no staff. I'm the chief of staff to a governor who has no staff. Why does he have no staff? Because until three hours ago, he was only the lieutenant governor. And when he was the lieutenant governor, I was his entire staff because- Lieutenant governors don't do anything. That, that, that's not entirely true, though. That's pretty much the job description. Uh, then Larry Clark, this- Idiot had, was forced to resign as governor because because he had sex with the runner-up in a beauty pageant. Yes. yes. 
Do you think it was the infidelity people objected to or the fact that he didn't sleep with the winner? It was the fact that he lied about it and got everyone who worked for him to lie about it. So when the truth came out, not only did Larry have to quit, but his whole staff had to quit. So suddenly, uh, my boss is the governor of the state. And he has no staff. And he has no staff. And... And I, and I need a team and I need a, 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 a plan and I need a... You need a pen? I, I need a pen. I don't think Larry Clark ever worked a day in this office. There, there's nothing in this desk but plastic forks and soy sauce. Look, I'm gonna be honest with you. This was never supposed to happen. Ned Newley was never supposed to be governor. I, I am not supposed to be governor's chief of staff. I've been working in politics since I was in college, but I, I always work for the, the honest guy, the guy who loses, for the good guy, the stand-up guy who has absolutely zero chance of ever getting elected. I'm not experienced at, you know, success. I called you this morning because when we worked together on the, um, uh, the Martin campaign, yes, you were great on that campaign. Oh, yeah, you were. Your polling was insanely accurate, and you were the smartest person on the whole team. Hmm. Well, thanks. Right. That's right. funny. I always had the impression that you didn't like me. No, no. It's just, I, I mean, you and I approach politics a little differently, uh, but. Every time we had a disagreement, you know. I was always right. You were always right. So you hired me to help with the politics part. Yes. To give political advice to Ned Newley. To Governor Ned Newley. Woo! I have to admit, it feels pretty swanky being on the governor's staff. Speaking of which, am I the whole staff? Uh, well, uh, uh, no. It, it, I call it human resources. They're sending over a temp. Oh, so you, me, and a temp. Yeah! Is this part of your not good at success thing? No, I, I was just thinking, for, for today anyway, uh, we should keep things small, just because Ned is a... Have you ever met Ned? No. Okay, uh, so, so Ned is, just so you know, uh, Ned's not comfortable having a lot of people around. What does that mean? He's just a quiet guy who likes things to be quiet. He just kind of works best by himself, mostly. This is the man who just became governor. Yes, but trust me, he's perfect for the job. He's incredibly smart, and he understands government better than anybody I've ever met. Believe me, once you get to know him, you're going to love him. I'm going to love him? Yeah. Oh. oh, my God. Now I remember why we didn't work well together. You're the guy who admires the guy. You're the guy who says, hey, our candidate, ooh, I like him. I'd vote for him. So let's not worry about how the campaign is going or what the polls are saying or what a disaster the swearing in ceremony was. Can we, can we not, we're not gonna talk about the swearing in ceremony. No, we're talking about the swearing in, Dave. It was five minutes on local television at eight o'clock in the morning. Who even saw it? The swearing in? Yeah. It's online. Right, but sure. sure. But I mean, I've watched it like nine times. I shared it on Facebook. What? Why? Why? Why would you share it on Facebook? Because it's that kind of video, Dave, the kind you have to watch. Ned taking the oath of office. Yes, Dave. Ned Newley taking the oath of office is the most amazingly, excruciatingly painful five minutes of live television I have ever seen. I mean, this is a man who just became governor in his first appearance on television. And all he has to do is repeat back what the judge says. Yeah. Yeah, just repeat the words. Okay, I don't, I don't need to but go instead, back. I don't he, need to relive this. He just stands there with this look of fear in his eyes, with this look of terror frozen on his face. H. And does nothing for five minutes but tremble uncontrollably from head to toe. I mean, it's impressive, Dave. See, I didn't, I didn't, I didn't get that much enjoyment out of I it. Mean, honestly, 
in the history of politicians failing on television, you you can't do much better than Ned Newley being sworn in. I mean, if he even was sworn in, can he claim to have taken the oath of office if he didn't actually say anything? He, he said something. No, no, he didn't say anything. He was just making noises. No, no, at the end, when he's supposed to say, so help me God, I, I definitely heard the words help me. I'm not sure that makes him governor. <sighs> Ned's just not comfortable in front of people and the cameras. Oh, so politics was a great career choice. No, no, no. Listen, Ned was an amazing lieutenant governor. Because lieutenant governors don't do anything. No, that's the point. Ned did everything. Larry Clark is genuinely as vacant as he looks. Every good idea he ever had came from Ned. Uh, his education policy, his energy plan, his annual budgets. It was all Ned. Ned Newley's basically been running this state since Larry was elected. I'm telling you, he's ready to be governor. Is he? Yes. Then you have to get him back on television today. No, Paige, I can't make him do that. I, I can't. Dave, Dave, there's a reason you hired me. You hated me the last time we worked together. I didn't hate you. I... Yeah, yeah, you kind of did. But you know I know politics and you knew I can tell you what happens next, which is this. There's two political parties, right? And the other guys, the guys who don't want Ned to be governor, yeah, they now have a video of him trembling uncontrollably for five minutes straight. And they're gonna use that video to get him kicked out of office. They're gonna call for a special election in six weeks. And I'm not telling you Ned won't win a special election. I'm telling you, he won't even get a chance to run because not even his own party wants Governor Mumbles as their candidate. So you have to undo this. You have to get him back on television today talking. Not a speech, just five minutes of him on camera speaking words. He can do that, right? Well, okay, yeah. See, this is why we didn't work well together. No, no, I know, I know you're right, Paige. Good because I am right. So we've got a plan. Now for the good news. Do you know the name Arthur Vance? The guy who's on CNN every election night? Exactly. I got a call from him this morning. How do you know Arthur Vance? I don't. He called me out of the blue. Someone I worked for saw the video I posted, Ned swearing in. She shared it with Arthur Vance. And as soon as he saw it, he wanted to help him out. Like, he basically wants to be a political advisor to Ned Newley. Arthur Vance. Yes. Hasn't he been like- Yes. A, a campaign manager, yep. a advisor to- Four of the last six presidents. presidents. Yes. And now he wants to work for Ned Newley. Like, really wants to work for him. I mean, you should have heard him on the phone. He said he was in Boston for some reason, sees the video, clicks on it, and it was like he like he had to work for him. I mean, he checked up out of his hotel, bought a plane ticket, called me from the airport. I mean, he's coming here? Yes, this is what I'm telling you. It's like some kind of God's end. I mean, I don't know, maybe politics is so crazy right now. If you're a guy like him, you're searching for something different, something- Genuine? Sure. All I know is Arthur Vance sees potential in this guy. Like, real potential. He's already got me doing polling on him. Questions about like competency, uh, likability. I mean, I think he has plans for him, like national plans. I mean, this guy's got connections. If he wanted to, he could make Ned Newley into a political superstar. Okay, but I, I'm not sure how Ned's gonna react to a political advisor who's worked in the White House. That is way outside of his comfort zone. Okay, here's the thing, Dave. You can either keep him in his comfort zone or keep him in his job. I mean, where is he anyway? Is he hiding? Uh, he's in his old office downstairs. He likes to work there. It's quiet and small, very little light. Yeah, you need to get him out of his cave, Dave. Right. And tell him Arthur Vance is coming to save his career. Okay. Hey there, hi, how are you? Uh, uh... My name's Louise, Louise Peaks. Oh, oh, Miss Peaks. Uh, uh, yes, from the temp agency. And you are? Uh, Dave Riley. 
Dave Riley, it's nice to meet you, Dave. Uh, Human Resources said you were coming. Oh, I'm happy to help out. I hear you guys are a little short-staffed. <laughs> oh, hi there, Louise Peaks. Paige Caldwell. Paige, pleasure to meet you, Paige. Paige and Steve. Uh, Dave. Dave, Dave, right, sorry. I'm not always great with names right off the bat, but I've got it now, Dave. So. What can I do for you? What's the job? I think they told me I'm uh, the assistant executive governor. Uh, that can't be right. It's, it's, it's uh, uh, actually, uh, uh, you'd be the governor's executive assistant. See, these titles always have too many words. Now, what is it, executive governor? Uh, executive assistant. Of course, executive assistant governor. Uh, no, 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 it's, it's, it's not a, uh, um, uh, you're not a governor. I'm an assistant governor. No, no, no. no look, look, let's not worry about my job title, okay? I'm just a temp. You just tell me what you need me to do and I'll get to work. Right, <laughs> right, great, great, thanks. Um, uh, okay, what I mostly need you to do is uh, sit out in the reception area. Perfect. Uh, there, you have a desk out there. Oh, excellent. And, uh, answer the phones, greet people when they come in. On the phone system. Well, this looks pretty straightforward. Yeah, they're uh, pretty, pretty standard. Has the usual buttons. You can probably put people on hold and transfer calls. Yeah, it's pretty standard. Okay, just to let you know, Phones are not always my strongest area, but I will figure it out, no worries. That's what I've learned being a temp. You're always finding yourself in a new situation, in a job you've never done before that you don't know how to do. But then you realize that, hey, that's okay, you know? Sure, 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 sure. Uh, okay. But uh, <laughs> just to be clear, <laughs> you have done this kind of job before. Oh, very likely not. But listen, this is what I do. Every day I'm in a new office and they say, okay, here's the job. And I say, okay, first time doing this. And by the end of the day, they're like, okay, good news. We don't need you here tomorrow. And I'm off to the next place. I have more experience than anyone at working somewhere I have no experience. So don't you worry about me. I'm going to be sitting at my desk, figuring out that phone. And let me know if you need anything else. Coffee? Oh, okay. yeah, actually, that sounds great. Oh, oh, no, I'm sorry. I was asking where I could get some coffee. Oh. I'll worry about that later. It's time to get to work. Nice to meet you both. Happy to be here. Okay. Well. She's a keeper, Dave. I mean, if you're only hiring one person, you gotta make it count. My God, I mean, they did tell me I was calling very last minute and any temp they could get wouldn't be the best. Oh, and she is not. She is but, definitely not the best. But if I send her back, do I get someone worse? I think that's literally impossible. I need to call human resources. I, I, first I need to find Ned. Hey, is there, you know, she said the word coffee. Now that's the only thing I can think about. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's a, a whole setup right, uh, uh, right next to her desk. Oh, well, you know, that explains why she couldn't find it. <laughs> oh, very nice. Uh, ah, ah. Oh, 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 all right. Uh, uh, Governor Newley? <laughs> um, Governor? <laughs> Governor Newley? Ah, ah, oh, ah, I'm sorry. I, I, I did not mean to startle you. I, I'm Paige Caldwell. I'm going to be working for you. Anyway, maybe now is not a good time. Oh, no. oh Dave. Okay. Hi. I'm <laughs> oh my god, I completely embarrassed myself in front of this woman. Jay, it's not your fault. Listen, it's not your fault. I'll just, maybe I'll just step outside for a second. 
I didn't even know she was in the room, and then suddenly she's like, hi, and I'm like, ah! Just like, oh. It's fine. I'll give you guys a chance to, it's fine. I'm really yeah, fine. Yeah. Just, just a second, if, if you don't mind, just give us a minute to, you know. Yeah, you, oh, God. It's fine. You're fine. I'm, I'm just all... It's fine. This whole day has been... Uh, it has. Hasn't it? I mean, I was hoping I could sneak in here when no one was looking. It's your office, Ned. You don't have to sneak in. I just really want to get to work on the budget. Okay, okay good. Good. That's good. Uh, did you look at the proposal the General Assembly sent over? Oh, yeah. I went through the whole thing. Good golly, Dave. These people are idiots. <laughs> yeah. Okay, look at this. Okay, They're completely ignoring the fact that there's a massive reduction in federal funding for schools. Our state's going to get $23 million less this year, which is the equivalent of, what, uh, uh, 460 full-time teaching salaries, right? Sure. You overlook a detail like that, suddenly uh, 18,400 of our students don't have a teacher. Is that right? Yeah, this is this is their education plan. And meanwhile, look, look, they're almost doubling doubling government subsidies for all these dairy farms. Huh. If I sign this budget, we'll end up with a state full of uneducated children and really rich cows. I don't think the money goes to the cows. The whole thing is a mess, Dave. I see that. I need to work on this. I agree. I need to just work on this and not do anything else like public speaking or appearing on television ever again in my life, okay? Ned? You're supposed to say yes, Dave. Well, no, that's... As my chief of staff, you're supposed to say yes to whatever I ask. I don't think that's the job description. Can I make it the job description? I want you to work on the budget, Ned. Good, okay, good. I, I, I want you to work on all the important stuff. <sighs> Policy, legislation, and, you know, doing your job. But do you remember last night when we first realized you might actually become governor? And I started to cry? Right, right. Uh, and we said, okay, if this happens, you and I are going to need to spend a little more time thinking about politics. <laughs> look, look, I know, I know that campaigning <laughs> and giving speeches <laughs> and uh, working the crowd... <laughs> God! I know, you hate all that stuff. It's not just that I hate it, it's I, I can't do that, Dave. I'm not built that way. But, Ned, you have won elections before. Yeah, but I told you, when I was elected state treasurer, people only voted for me because I looked like a treasurer. And when Larry Clark ran for governor, he picked me as his running mate because, well, you know, well, Larry is so charismatic. They, they decided they needed to run with someone extremely dull just to balance the ticket. I don't think that's true. No, it is. He told me. Larry told you that? Yeah, the guy, the campaign did a poll. 66% of respondents said Larry was the kind of guy they'd like to have a beer with. 70% said they were wondering if I would drive them home later on from the bar. I don't even know what that means. It means I'm the boring guy. No, no, no. no. You're the guy they trust with their car. Only because I'm not drinking. But the guy who's so drunk he can't drive? They want him to be governor. This is why politics frightens me. Okay, it frightens me too. But we have to figure it out, Ned. We have to. Because if we don't, they're going to kick you out of office. <sighs> There's this thing called a special election. Yeah, yeah. You know what that is? An election is something I would lose, but... A special election is special because I'd lose it faster. Right. And if you're only governor for six weeks, you don't get to rewrite the budget. And you know what will happen instead? Whoever replaces you will sign that bill exactly as is, the way it's written, and we'll end up with a state full of uneducated children. And really rich cows. Do you want that to happen? No. Do you want to lose this job? No, I don't. Great. And I've got good news for you. Have you ever heard of Arthur Vance? Arthur Vance? Yeah. The guy who's on CNN every night, election exactly. night? Exactly. Oh, I've, of course I've heard of him. Well, uh, he's flying here from Boston because he wants to work for you. He, he wants to help you figure out politics. Arthur Vance? Yes. The political guru yep. who's been a personal advisor to uh, yeah. 44 of the last 45 presidents? Roughly. It's coming to work for me. 
That's right. Why? Because he saw your swearing in this morning and he thinks you've got potential as a politician on a national level. And he wants to turn you into a political superstar. That's unbelievable. I know. I mean, I don't believe it. I know. I mean, I think you're lying to me. I'm not lying. Paige talked to him on the phone. Who's Paige? Oh, the woman uh, who was in here earlier. She's the pollster. I told uh, you about the one I, I hired this morning. Arthur Vance wants to work for me? Yes. But would I have to talk to him? Well, yeah. Talking to people is... <laughs> I know. I mean, I try to speak clearly, but... <laughs> I know. And then... <laughs> okay, 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 okay. Now, now I don't actually know what you're saying. Look, look, look. Yeah. I know you didn't ask for this job. Damn it, Ned, I need you to be governor. I, I need to know that somebody in some branch of government knows what he's doing and cares about the job and worries he isn't getting it right. Guys like Larry Clark, th that guy always gets elected. And we know how that turns out. But for once, somehow, the guy who should have the job got the job. And I think that's worth fighting for. So? So let's talk to Arthur Vance and figure out how to keep me here. Yes, please. Okay. Okay. I'll get Paige. <laughs> hey there. Hi. Oh. Louise Peaks. Uh, yes, I, I remember. Just giving you an update from the reception area. Oh, I'm sorry. I don't think we've met. Oh, oh, um, Louise oh. Peaks. Uh, uh, Miss Peaks. Uh, and your name is Ned. I'm, I'm, I'm Ned. Well, it's nice to meet you, Ned. Uh, uh, this is the governor, Miss Peaks. Oh, oh my goodness, that's pretty dumb of me. No, no. <laughs> You're the guy I'm working for. No, that's all right. I, I'm not really. I mean. I've only been governor for four hours. <laughs> well, that doesn't mean you're not the governor. Every job I've ever had, I've only had for a few hours. Just because it's your first day working here doesn't mean you shouldn't feel confident in what you're doing. Oh! Even if you don't know what you're doing. I don't know what I'm doing, but that doesn't mean I'm not a valuable employee. Well, technically, as a temp, you, you really are just limited There's to... There's nothing saying you can't be governor. I think you can be governor, don't you? I, um, uh, actually, uh, yeah, yeah, yes, I do, I do. See? Everybody here thinks you're doing great, okay? Okay. <laughs> okay. Glad we cleared that up, Ted. Ned. Oh, Ned, sorry. Names I'm not always great with. That's all right. <laughs> but I keep working at them till I get them right. Oh, oh, speaking of which, I almost figured out the phone at my desk. I am very close. Now, I'm not quite answering it, okay? But I'm getting very comfortable just letting it ring. Now, on the upside, at least we know I can work that intercom, since I was able to talk to you a little in here earlier. When? What? When I buzzed you, when we spoke on the intercom. That wasn't you? No. Oh, okay. That's why you sounded French. So we didn't talk about Mr. Pants? Who? Uh, the man who's waiting to see the governor, Mr. Pants. You mean, you mean Vance, Mr. Vance? Oh, could be. His first name is Martha. Arthur? He flew here from Austin. Boston? Which is the one in Mississippi. Massachusetts? Okay, okay. Let's start over. Yes. He's working with the woman who was in here earlier. Yes. Who does the upholstery. Or polling, maybe. Well, she's an upholsterer. <laughs> uh, no, I, I think she's a pollster. Yes, she's an upholsterer. A pollster. A pollster. A pollster. Uh, you know, why don't you just show them in? Good plan. Nice to meet you, Governor. Nice to meet you, Louise. Happy to be on your team. Okay. 
I am sorry, Ned. I'm obviously having her replaced. Oh, I like her. Yeah, you, what? What? She's got confidence. Yeah, I, I'm not sure confidence is a thing she should have. Governor? Yes, Louise? Martha Pants. And here I am at last in the room with the man. The man who called to me this morning like a siren, who spoke to me through the screen of my laptop and said, Arthur Vance, whatever plans you had for this week, for this year, forget them. They can wait. The whole world can wait. There is only one thing for you now, one purpose, and its name is Ned Newley. Um, don't, 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 don't say a word. I don't need you to speak. I just need you to be real. All morning I've been traveling just to shake your hand, and it is, it's thrilling, it's intoxicating. <laughs> <laughs> and, and this must be Dave, yes? Yes, sir. I already like you, Dave, because you're the guy who believes in that guy. And then yes, there's Miss Caldwell. Do you even realize what a talent she is? And she's the first person you hired? Oh, I'm the only person he hired. No, <laughs> I'm going to say that counts. But you gentlemen aren't going to believe the work she's done for us already. The numbers? She just showed me. Ned Newley, honestly, you have no idea what a fortunate man you are. Oh? You, you have no idea how of the moment this moment is. Your moment, Governor. Oh? Until today, you were a common man, a nobody content to be a nobody. And then because... Some clown named Clark couldn't keep his Johnson in his trousers. Suddenly, you're the governor, and you say to yourself, I'm not sure I'm up for this. Oh, I wasn't. Sound about right? <laughs> exactly. I just... And then you stand up in front of those cameras with the whole world watching, and you say, world, I'm not sure I'm up for this. <laughs> I'm, I'm sorry, are, are, you, are you trying to say no, 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 Dave, I'm not being critical, okay? I'm just telling you what America saw, Paige. Among those who viewed the swearing-in, 26% said Ned looked a little unprepared to be governor. Uh -huh. Okay, 20, 26 is... 37% said he looked extremely unprepared to be governor, and 14% said he looked absolutely, totally unprepared to be governor. Absolutely, totally. And those were the younger viewers. Altogether, that's seventy-seven percent. Okay, wait, 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 wait. But but, but seventy-seven percent of what number? I mean, how many people in the state watch the video? No, oh, <laughs> it isn't just this state, Dave. This is national. What's the current tally on YouTube? YouTube? Nine hundred thousand views. Nine hundred thousand? No, oh, boy. How did it get on YouTube? I posted it back in Boston, and then I made a few calls. Got the folks at CNN talking about it and Fox News. MSNBC. Al Jazeera. Al Jazeera. Plus, for the last 40 minutes, Ned Newley has been trending on Twitter. I don't even know what that means. You're a popular man, Governor. A popular? You just said 77% of people think he's unqualified to be governor. Unprepared to be governor. Unqualified got 81%. Oh, those are impressive numbers. Wow. Yeah, imp impressive, yes, in how bad they are. Well, why are you telling him this? Why Why are you happy about bad news? Ba bad news? This is great news. The three quarters of America thinks Ned is unprepared for his job? Yes, Dave, look, uh, I'm, I'm sorry to be the one to break it to you, but times have changed. Unprepared is where it's at, Dave. Unqualified is the new qualified. People today are looking for a, a, a new kind of leader, not a career politician stagnated by years of experience, but a common man whose head is not clouded by too much knowledge. A, a humble citizen, blissfully unaware of how government works or even what its purpose is. In other words, someone absolutely, completely unprepared for elected office. And this morning, <laughs> at a gloriously horrible swearing-in ceremony, the America found that man, Ned Newley. Okay, okay, but wait, but that, wait, that, that's not at all who Ned is. Ned knows more about government than anybody. Oh yes, but he doesn't look like he does. 
Politics is a visual medium, Dave. People vote for idiots who look like leaders, but Ned's a new phenomenon, huh? A leader who looks like an idiot. So you're saying he should try to look stupid? No, I'm not, 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 not saying he should try, but you know, if it comes naturally... Dave, I don't think you appreciate the gift you have been given here. If the most competent candidate is the one who loses, huh? If experience is a dirty word, then what are we supposed to do? Look for the worst candidate we can find, huh? Well, guess what, Dave? We found him. So why fight this? Why not embrace it? Well, why not say to the world, yes, that man you saw at the swearing-in, the one who looked lost and confused, that's your new governor. A very simple man, maybe a touch slow. No, he's not. Not a deep thinker, not a big talker, huh? I'm not a big talker. Right? Not a talker at all. Doesn't understand that bill he's supporting or the law he just signed. That, that is, that is not, we're, we're, we're not. Isn't going to give big speeches, isn't going to give any speeches. We're not doing this. Wait, what, what was that about not giving speeches? Just a humble guy who comes to work every day and tries to do his job. That sounds nice. Ned, don't, don't, don't listen to this. Dave, do you know the most common word voters use today to describe their ideal candidate? Real. Yes! My God, she's good! It's the one word I hear in every campaign. People are looking for someone who's real. Someone who's real. And then this morning, I saw you, a man untarnished by artifice or political skill or personality. And I thought, my God, that's the guy. Oh, let me work with that man, and I will not only stop him from being thrown out of office, I will not only put an end to all this special election nonsense, I will transform Ned Newley into the most popular politician in the United States of America. Now, how do you like the sound of that? Hmm? Is that his happy face? No. Does he have a happy face? Uh, Mr. Vance... Look, I get it. What Ned is, what he actually is, knowledgeable, sincere, that's not popular. But that just means what is popular is really scary. So if you think you can help people choose Ned for the reasons they should choose him, great. But if your whole plan is selling Ned as, as, as an idiot, maybe that's what voters want to hear, but that, that's Do you not think it'll work? Exactly. It's not even going to work. No, no, I'm asking Mr. Vance. Do you think it'll work? Do you think people will believe I'm not that bright? No, <laughs> there's not a doubt in my mind. But if they think I'm stupid, will they still support my ideas? This is what we've learned, Ned. If they like you, they will support whatever comes out of your mouth, and they already like you. Paige? When asked if they would invite you to their backyard barbecue, 64% of respondents said yes, provided you stayed clear of the open flames. Ned, you can't agree to this. Why not? For two years we let people think a nincompoop named Larry Clark was running the government. Why is it wrong to let them think it's a nincompoop named Ned Newley? Nincompoop named Ned Newley, is that too long for a hashtag? If pretending I can't do my job, let me do my job. Wait, is that the plan? You don't need to pretend you can't do your job. You're the governor. Nobody knows what your job is. You just seem to, to, to like you know you don't know what your job is either. Hmm? I, I can't believe I'm hearing this. So I should seem confused? Oh, my God, yes. Could you look any more confused? No. Oh. Yeah, okay, I guess you can. I'll tell you, Governor, you're God's gift to modern politics. I am? Oh, my God, that's even more confused. You're going to make me cry. Paige, please tell me. You honestly think this is com not completely insane. I think it's brilliant. What? Why should we keep letting the real idiots win? I mean, you want to keep him in office, right? And you were afraid of putting him back on television today? Television? Is there any way I could not go on television? Governor, I know an interview sounds frightening, but this <laughs> time you don't have to worry about looking bad on camera. Exactly. Now, I've got a friend who's the news director at your local Channel 3. He's sending someone over here at 1 o'clock this afternoon. Wait, wait, wait. Since when are you scheduling media appearances for the governor? 
Well, somebody has to, Dave. Huh? Somebody's got to do something to keep him in office. No, I, I can't. I, I can't allow this. Well, it's not up to you, Dave. It's up to the governor. That's your call, sir. What do you say, huh? Shall we give it a shot? Ned? Part of me really doesn't want to, but... Is that a yes? It was pretty close to a yes. Yes, let's get to work. Uh, Paige, um, I want you to set up focus groups all across the state. I'm on it. I want us watching the people while they're watching the interview to get their reactions in real time. Uh, uh, Governor, you and me and Dave are going to go do a little rehearsing, get you comfortable with Ned Newley, Simple Man. Um, uh... <laughs> Who am I kidding? You're already there. <laughs> I'll tell you something, my friend. I spent a lot of days thinking maybe it was time for me to get out of this game. The victories were too few. The losses were too hard, you know. But deep down, I had a hope that someone out there was a candidate who could inspire me again. An, an unknown, a fresh face. The new face of American politics. Huh? That... That doesn't sound like my face. No! That's the face, Governor. That is the face of a winner. Oh. Ah, we should fix that chair. All right, this is just for practice, okay? The TV people will bring their own equipment. Arthur just wants you to get comfortable with the camera. It's not the camera I'm afraid of, you know. No, no, I know. It's not the piece of equipment that makes me self-conscious. I'm fine with the camera. I'm, it's just sitting there looking at me. I mean, it's not looking at me. It's, it's inanimate. It's, it's, I mean, it's not even on. Uh, actually, it is on. Oh, God. Hey, 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 it's all right, Ned. Forget about the camera. You think this interview is a bad idea, don't you? I do, but I haven't got any better ideas. I just want you to keep this job. And I'm the one who said maybe Arthur Vance can make that happen. I think he can. Yeah, well, yeah, the guy knows politics. In a way that you and I can't even understand. I mean, when you're getting advice from someone who's an expert like him, it, it's like that quote from Tennyson. Ours is not to reason why. Ours is but to do and die. Right. Uh, although that is from a poem in which everyone dies. Hey there. Hi. Oh. Louise Peaks. Yes, I, I uh, remember your name. Oh, okay. Good job. Mm -hmm. Hey there. How are you doing? Uh, Ned. Uh, Ned. Ned. Nice to see you, Ned. Nice to see you, Louise. <laughs> Just came in to say, I got the note you left at my desk. Great. A reporter from Channel 1 will be here at 3 o'clock. A reporter from Channel 3 will be here at 1 o'clock. Oh, okay. Are those two different reporters? No, 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 no. Just the one at 1 o'clock, which is in 20 minutes. And all I need you to do is let me know when she arrives, okay? Just let you know when she gets here. Yes. That's it? That's it. <laughs> well, I can do that. Great. That's easy. Fantastic. There's just one other question, though, I wanted to ask. Yes? There's a bowl of candies on the coffee table out there. Would it be all right if I had some? Yes? Would it be all right if I already had some before I asked? Yes. Would it be all right if there were no more candies in the bowl? And a follow-up question. Where do you keep your candies? Okay, can we work on that later? 
Oh, absolutely. Mm. I'll keep an eye out for the lady from Channel One at... At three. Three o'clock. No, 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 one o'clock. Oh, three o'clock. Okay. You still want her working here? She's got great energy. <laughs> yeah, because she ate all the candy. All right, folks, let's do some rehearsing. Um, we've got our camera set up here. Excellent. Thank you for that, Dave. Sure. Hmm. Governor, I'll be playing the part of the reporter from Channel 3. Right, Rachel. Uh, Rachel Parsons. Right, uh, okay. Let's have Miss Parsons sit here and over there on the sofa, perfectly placed in the loneliest position in the room, is Governor Ned Newley. <laughs> um, why don't you say something for the camera, Governor? Uh, I can't think of anything to say. Ah! <laughs> Words never before heard from the lips of a politician. <laughs> You're so good at this. I am. You're doing great, Ned. You really are. And meanwhile, Dave is going to remember to stay out of the shot. Stay out of the shot? <laughs> stay out of the shot, right. That's okay, Dave. We're just getting the hang of this, all right? Okay, Paige, why don't you start us off, huh? Governor, I'm just going to ask you a question and you just respond, okay? Okay. Don't think about the camera or anyone else in the room. Just listen to the question and respond. Okay. Governor Newley, this is your first day on the job. What would you say is your top priority coming into office? Uh, I guess addressing the issue of decreased Medicare reimbursements. Oh, okay. Which is resulting in doctors leaving the program. The estimate is in our state alone, more than 36% of physicians will stop accepting Medicare. Oh, wow. While the number of Medicare patients is increasing to over... Okay, no, 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 no. Oh, 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 oh sorry. W w was, I, was I too mumbly? No, not too mumbly. I thought it was great, Ned. It was a perfect answer. And the way you just came out with those numbers... It just Dave. Right, Sid, stay out of the shot. Stay out of right. the shot. Okay, that was, and I don't mean this as a compliment... Eloquent. Oh. And smart and detailed and, you know... I'm sorry. None of the things we're looking for here. Right, right, right. The Ned we want to see is the Ned America fell in love with this right. morning. Hmm? Sorry. All right. Don't, don't feel bad. It happens to everybody. You get comfortable, you let your guard down, and you start... Accurately quoting Medicare statistics from memory. Dave. But I'm just saying, who doesn't? Dave... Look, here's the thing, Governor, and I've been teaching this lesson for 35 years. When a reporter asks you a question, giving the right answer, that's hard. Giving the wrong answer, that's worse. So the safest path is not to give any answer at all. You mean don't speak? No, 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 no. You speak, but you don't answer. Here, allow me to demonstrate. What I have here are four index cards, hmm? numbered one through four, and on each of these cards I've written a simple phrase, and all I want you to do is take card number one and read it out loud. Okay, uh, it needs fixing. Great. Now, let's go back to what you were just talking about, right? Medicare. But this time, when Paige asks you the question, don't answer it. Just read that card. All right, Paige? Governor Newley, what is your position on Medicare? It needs fixing. God. Find out what wasn't supposed to be all out. That was great, Governor. Yeah? Great start. Great. Now let's try another question, okay? Using the same card now, Paige? Governor, what are your thoughts on the budget deficit? It needs fixing. See? It's simple. This is a simple man, and for him, every question has a simple answer, and that answer is written on that card. Any question you are asked can be answered by that card. Any question. But do you know what a true leader is? It needs fixing. Uh, no, no. Someone who needs fixing? No, 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 no. Someone who needs a fix. No, no, I'm sorry. I, I, that was my fault. I meant it as a rhetorical question. Which card is that? No, it isn't. <clears throat> Look, just, just read card two, okay? We have to find an outsider. Perfect. Now, let's try those two cards together. First card one and then card two, okay? All right. 
All right, Governor, what do you think about the public school system? It needs fixing. Fixing? How do we fix it? We have to find an outsider. You see? It's amazing. Oh, okay. That's easy. Isn't it? Does it matter that I don't know what I'm saying? Oh, someone, please say yes. Of course it matters. Okay. What is an outsider? Uh, an, an outsider is someone who's not on the inside. He's, he's someone who, um, who, Paige, help me out here. Let's say there's a group of people trying to solve a problem, but their ideas aren't working. Exactly. So they have to bring fresh ideas into the room. From the outside? Yes. The outside of the room? Well, the outside of... It's not outside a room. It's just outside of... The outside is... It's outside. All right. Let's just leave out what the outside is outside of. The point is you. Ned, you. Okay? You are the outsider. I am? Yes! So I have to find myself? No! We have to. No, wait. We have to find you. Where am I? You're right outside. Dave. You want me to bring him in? Dave. Let's just look at card three. It's just... It just takes common sense. Great. So, um... Governor, how do we solve the budget deficit? We have to find an outsider. Or? The outsider will find us. No, 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 no. Look, I'm saying instead of the outsider card, you could use this card. Right. Sorry. Ask me again. Oh, Governor, how do we solve the deficit? It just takes common sense. Right. Solve the deficit. Yeah, that doesn't sound right. Yeah, I'm going to have to go with them on this one. Okay, let's just look. Uh, there's only one card left. Why don't you just read the last card? The last card. Uh, oh. I'm just an average guy. Okay, now do you see how those four cards tell a story? We've got problems that need fixing, whatever they are, and we need someone new to fix them, an outsider. Someone who just uses common sense. And then along comes you, who's just an average guy, which is exactly what we're looking for, you see? Yeah, I think I do, yeah. Thank God. I mean, this isn't me. No. This is who people think I am. Exactly. But the average guy card, are you saying I'd use this as an answer to a question? Absolutely, Paige. <laughs> Mr. Newley, after your swearing-in ceremony this morning, a lot of people are questioning whether you're qualified to be governor. How would you respond to them? I'm just an average guy. Oh, yes. Yeah? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> God, yes. All right. Dave? It's, uh, it's very convincing. This is going to work, Governor. It's going to be great. Can I just, uh, I'm sorry, just to clarify, is that all he's going to say in response to her questions? Well, maybe, maybe not. He, he could elaborate from there. Elaborate? You don't have to use the phrases verbatim. What matters is these words are helping you get a feel for this man. Yeah. And remember, he's not going to be somebody who's going to dazzle us with language. No, I'm not. He's a simple guy. I'm simple. Well... Maybe not that simple. Average, average. 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 I'm an average guy. Yes. I'm just an average guy. Perfect, perfect. Uh, uh, Paige, uh, are the focus groups ready to go? Yeah, I've got seven different groups set up across the state. While they're watching the interview, I'll be monitoring their reactions right next door. You're amazing. Go get to work. Hey, this is going to be great, Dave. Is it? Yeah, look how far he's come. I'm I'm just an I'm just average. <laughs> you remember this morning when he couldn't even talk to me? Yeah, I kind of miss that guy. You wait till you see these poll results. Your governor is going to be a hit. Just an average guy. I'm just average, like a guy. Is that what you meant by less verbatim? Uh, sort of moving the words around. On average, I'm a guy. No. No, uh, that kind of changes the meaning, doesn't it? Yeah, don't 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 do that. Hey, Dave, I just got a text from Rachel Parsons. She's been waiting out in the reception area. Oh, God. 
Yeah, she she thinks your reception has probably forgot about her. No, it's all good, Dave. You show Miss Parsons in here, get everything set up, and the governor and I will go back to your office and keep working until she's ready for us. Now, I, I got you a change of clothes in case you want to look a little more casual for the camera. How's that sound? I'm just an average guy. Yes, you got this, Governor. You got this. Hey there. Hi. Oh, boy. Louise Peaks. Yes. Just wanted to confirm that was you this time. That what was me? On the intercom. No. Five minutes ago. Nope. When I buzzed you. You did not buzz me. On the intercom. Miss Peaks, is someone waiting to see the governor? Yes. In fact, there are two people. Okay. They're both from a television station. Right. One of them is a man with a camera. Possibly a camera man. Do you want to know their names? Did you write them down? No, I've written down, do you want to know their names? Why don't you just ask them if they'd like to come in? Got it. Yes. Yes what? Yes, they'd like to come in. Okay. Uh, uh, Ms. Parsons, uh, thank you, Ms. Peaks. Oh, anytime. That'll be all. Happy to help. Please leave. Okay. Dave Riley. Ms. Parsons. Rachel, I don't think we've met. I'm very sorry we kept you waiting. This is AC Peterson. I'm nice to meet you. Uh, AC can set everything up. You have any idea where you'd like us to sit? Oh, we were thinking the two of you over here on the sofa. Does that work for you, AC? Uh. AC doesn't talk much. So, Dave Riley, the new governor's chief of staff, a man I somehow have never met before. What's your deal? What's your story? Oh, I mean, I mean. And I'm, I'm just asking that. That's just personal curiosity. I'm not asking that as a reporter, okay? I'm not trying to break any rules. I'm completely clear about the whole not asking any questions thing. I got the memo. Uh, what, what memo? The figurative memo, the message. I got the message about not asking any probing questions. You look like you have no idea what I'm talking about. I think I have no idea what you're talking about. The rules clearly laid out to me about this interview, that it's actually not an interview, that I'm not here as a reporter. I'm just here because my boss, the head of our news division, is pals with Arthur Vance. They go golfing together. Is that what it is, golfing? Sorry, that, <laughs> that was totally a question. That's just me. Even when I'm not being a reporter, I sound like a reporter. The way you probably sound like a politician, even when you're not being a politician. Actually, you don't sound oh, much I mean, like I, a politician. I, I, I'm, I'm... <laughs> Are you saying, I'm sorry, are you saying told you that you couldn't ask any questions? Oh, look, you don't have to pretend that. You, um, I'm sorry I mentioned it. Was I, was I not supposed to mention it? No. Okay, okay. I, I don't exactly know the etiquette of- Oh, no, 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 I, no, no. I meant, no, you weren't supposed I'm just, to. I'm just telling you, and I don't know why I'm telling you, but I'm just, I'm not a big fan of people in the news business being pals with the people we're supposed to cover, okay? Arrangements where you do us a favor, like offering an exclusive interview with the governor, and we do you a favor, like promising the reporter won't ask any tough questions. How does it feel kind of stuff? Since apparently our new governor is not very bright. Is that true, by the way? Is Ned Newley not very bright? Shit. I did it again. Okay, honestly, it's involuntary. It just comes out. But I, I, I really don't want to get fired today. So, no more questions. Eight years. I have been covering politics in this state, and this is my first time setting foot in the governor's office. But I will just, I will just sit here and smile pretty for the camera. Right, AC? AC doesn't talk much. Unlike me, you. Sorry. <laughs> no, I'm sorry to, to hear all that. Look, you pretending to be innocent and sympathetic isn't really... Wait, you are pretending, aren't you? I don't think I'm pretending. Are you saying you weren't told about this arrangement? Arthur Vance didn't share that fact with the governor's chief of staff. 
he did not. Well, that's an awesome little scoop for me to put in the story that I'm not allowed to write. I'll just file that under leads I can't pursue, along with why would Arthur Vance fly here from Boston to work for a governor nobody's ever heard of? And why is he claiming that Ned Newley's not smart when he's been our state treasurer for... Wait, wh why are you... Why are you looking at me like that? Like what? Like you're intrigued by what I'm saying? Shouldn't you be denying and deflecting and interrupting me with pre-rehearsed sound bites? Are you sure you work in politics? I do, but uh, I'm not sure I'm any good at it. It is odd that we've never met before, <laughs> that I've never covered anyone you've worked for. Well, no one I've worked for has ever won an election. <laughs> Damn. If I could be a reporter today, which I can't, I've got a feeling you and I could have a really interesting conversation. You know, off the record. Oh, oh right, sorry, uh, uh, the intercom. Um, uh, th th this is actually an historic uh, occasion. Uh, hello? Hey there, hi. Hello, Miss Peaks. Louise Peaks. Yes, I, I, I see you figured out how to work the intercom. I figured out how to use the intercom. I was just gonna say that. Can you hear me? She can't hear me. I can't hear you. Because she's holding down the talk button. Should I not be holding down the talk button? I'm going to hang up now, Miss Peaks. I don't know why I said that since she can't hear me. Is being an idiot kind of a, a theme around here? Uh, Dave, could you step in here for a second? Ah, uh, yeah, sorry. Uh, Are they supposed to leave people alone in the governor's office? God, I didn't even know you were still in the room. Yeah, no one ever does. Hey, you want to steal some shit? No. You know, it's a memento of when government was still standing. <laughs> Are you anticipating a time where it isn't still standing? With these folks in charge? Yeah, I give it a week. Miss Parsons. <clears throat> Mr. Vance, call me Rachel. How's your boss at Channel 3? Same as he ever was. Oh, he speaks very highly of you, Rachel. Well, I guess I'll have to live up to that. <laughs> Are we all good to go in here? We all set, AC? Uh, <sighs> that was a yes. Aha. All right, then. Um, allow me to introduce Governor Ned Newley. Hey, guys, what's up? What's going on in here? Governor, this is Rachel Parsons. Hey, how's it going? Governor, uh, no, it's nice to meet you. Oh, hey, listen, I'm just lucky to be here. I mean, how did this happen, you know? Okay, let's, let's save a little something for the interview, Governor. Sounds like good thinking. Good common sense thinking. You're going to be great, Ned. Not great, Dave. Just, just average. Okay. Governor, uh, this is AC. He's going to set up your mic. AC, hey. Hey, we're going to have you sit over here, sir. I'm not a sir, AC. I'm just a, just a guy. Uh, yeah. Arthur, uh, did you tell your friend at Channel 3 that his reporter wasn't allowed to ask Ned any tough questions? But if I did, would you be unhappy about that? Okay, folks, they're coming back from commercial in 40 seconds. The anchor in the studio will give a lead into Rachel, and then we're on the air. Dave, the governor is about to go on live television. There's lots of things to be worried about right now. Him not having to answer tough questions ain't one of them. 30 seconds. Okay, what should I be worried about? The, the unknown, Dave, the unexpected. Well, that sounds terrifying. Exactly. 20 seconds. What kind of unknown are we talking about? Oh, no. Oh, God, no. Uh, 15 seconds. Uh, 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 Miss Peaks? Hey there, hi. Uh, yes, can you, can you hear me? It's Louise Peaks. Yes, I know your name. 10 seconds till we're live. Uh, well, we can't, uh, we can't be talking on the intercom right now. I can hear you. Yes, yes, did you hear what I said? We can't be talking on the intercom right now. Right, so I'm going to hang up now. Okay, I'll just come in then. No! We're live in five, four, three. Thank you, Charlie. Hey there, hi! And we are live in the historic office of the governor. 
And I, oh my goodness, what the hell is she doing with the governor, uh, with Governor Ned Newley? And let me start by thanking you, Governor, for inviting us here today. Oh, hey, you know, I'm just here being an average guy, doing my job, working. (laughs) Right. And uh, of course, this is a new job for you. Yeah. And how about that? A regular guy like me being the governor? Right. So, uh, why don't you tell us what it's like on your first day in the job? Oh, today is, uh... Oh, oh, I I can answer that one, I think. Oh. Because it's my first day on the job, too. Um... Yeah, I just started this morning. Hi there, Louise Peaks, and you are... Uh, Rachel. Um... Rachel, nice to meet you, Rachel. Oh, I'm sorry, I'm not quite clear. You said you were... Louise, but my friends, if they're watching me at home, <laughs> my friends call me Lulu. No, I, I meant your job here. Oh, oh, I'm the assistant governor. <clears throat> assistant governor. Is that what it is? <laughs> yeah, they brought me in today. I guess what the ladies in the cafeteria were saying is everyone who used to work in this office had to quit because the other governor had sex with a woman. But Ned didn't have to quit because he has not had sex with a woman. Oh, that's not exactly true. I I mean, it's been a while, but uh, I, I can't believe I just said that on live television. Oh, no. I, I didn't quite catch that. Oh, God, this is all going to hell. Okay. Oh. Um, then uh, let's come back to you. Hi there, Louise Peaks. Yes. Uh-huh. So, uh, have you worked with Governor Newley before? Oh, no, no. I have no experience in government. Wait! I have cards! <laughs> you have what, Governor? We gotta stop this. No, 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 no. Wait, <laughs> wait, wait a second. But, you know, I like it here. I like working for the government. It needs fixing. What needs fixing? The government? Are you saying that the government needs fixing? Oh, I bet it does. Which is why it's probably good to have somebody here who's never done this before. Arthur! No, don't stop this. Don't you dare stop this. You know, somebody who, you know, just showed up. We have to find an outsider. Exactly. And I think we all feel like outsiders sometimes, don't we? I'm just an average guy. Well, yes. Yes, you are. But you try hard, and you're doing great, isn't he? And okay, yes, this is his first day on the job, and he doesn't know what he's doing. And I don't know what I'm doing, but you know, how hard can this be? What, running the government? It just takes common sense. Exactly. That's what I always say. We'll just keep working at it and we'll figure it out. I'm sorry, uh, Lulu. What did you say your job title was? Assistant governor or, or something. It's like the governor, but just under that. You mean lieutenant governor? Yes, that's it. No, oh, no, no. Is that right? Governor Newley, is Lulu your nominee for lieutenant governor? We have to find an outsider. <laughs> right. I am happy to say that we've just made some news here as we introduce Governor Newley's nominee for lieutenant governor, Lulu Peaks. Any final thoughts, Governor? It needs fixing. And we're here to fix it. And back to you, Charlie. Don't want to be an American idiot. Don't want a nation under the new media. It get you with the sound of the stereo. The subliminal on my fuck America. Welcome to a new kind of tension. All across the alien mission. Everything is meant to be okay. The television dreams of tomorrow. We're not the ones I'm meant to follow. After the Tinder 2 or Q. Well, maybe I'm the faggot 
back agenda. Now everybody to the propaganda. Let's sing along at the age of paranoia. Cider, 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 and luck habits too. Will only help to speed the ball for Tippy Canoe and Tyler too. And with him will be little Van, Van, Van is a used up man. And with him will be little Van. of mighty waters, 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 onward it will go. And the course will bring me through for Tippy Canoe and Tyler too. And with him will be little Van, Van, Van is a used up man. And with him will be little Van. Some on rights and some on wrongs prefer their own reflections. The people's rights demand our song, the right of free elections for government and order's sake and law's important sections. Let's all stand by the ballot box for freedom of elections. Law and order be the state with freedom and protection. Let all stand by the ballot box for fair and free elections. Each town and county's wealth and peace, its trade and all connections, with science arts must all increase by fair and free elections. Then thwart the schemes of fighting lands and traitor disaffections. Stand up with willing heart and hands for fair and free elections. Law and order be the state with freedom and protection. Let all stand by the ballot box for fair and free elections. 
Should enemies beset us round of foreign fierce complexions, undaunted we can stand our ground upheld by free elections. Elections are to make us laws for trade, peace and protection. Who fails to vote forsakes the cause of fair and free elections. Law and order be the state with freedom and protection. Let all stand by the ballot box for fair and free elections. In a quaint New England farmhouse on an early summer's day, a farmer's boy became our chief in a homely, simple way. With neither pomp nor pageantry, he firmly met the task to keep him on that job of his is all the people ask so keep cool and keep coolidge is the slogan of the day keep cool and keep coolidge for the good old usa a lot of politicians cannot do a thing but knock but calvin coolidge is a man of action and not talk so keep cool and keep coolidge in the white house four years more we have a chance to do it in this year of 24. He's been tried, he's never wanting, he is giving of his best. So keep cool and keep cool it in our country's mighty test. With a private life of virtue and a public record clean, he stands upon the summit with a countenance serene. Defender of the righteous, and a juggernaut to wrong will make him stay in Washington a hundred million strong. So keep cool and keep coolidge is the slogan of the day. Keep cool and keep coolidge for the good old USA. A lot of politicians cannot do a thing but knock. But Calvin Coolidge is a man of action and not talk. So just keep cool and keep coolidge in the White House four years more. We have a chance to do it in this year of 24. He's been tried, he's never wanting. He is giving of his best. So keep cool and keep coolidge in our country's mighty test.
lot of value left in me. Dave! Oh, hey. <laughs> I'm happy to see you up and uh, moving again. What? The last three times I came in here, you were lying on the floor in the fetal position. Oh, well, I think I just needed some time to process and grieve. Uh-huh. Yeah, well, uh, well, 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 then I realized if we're going to fix this, we've got to get on it quick. So I've been writing out some, uh, some different options. Options for? Well, we, we need to start with some kind of retraction, obviously. The public needs to know that despite what they heard, the woman who interrupted the governor on television is not Ned's nominee for lieutenant governor. Uh, she's a temp who was hired to answer the phones, which, although we don't have to mention this, she never actually managed to do. <laughs> right. have, have you been drinking a lot of coffee, Dave? No, no, co no coffee. This is, this is the natural energy I get when my entire world is, is collapsing around me. So... Uh, ooh, there's a bunch of tax we can take on this. Uh, um, there's, <clears throat> uh, I misunderstood the question, uh, which makes him sound stupid, but you'll like that. Uh, there's, my words were misconstrued, uh, which is completely illogical, but I'm proud of that one. Uh, oh, there's, uh, uh, the announcement was premature, uh, in which case Miss Peaks is one of several candidates we're considering, uh, the rest of whom can actually do the job. Uh, oh, and then there's, no, I didn't say lieutenant governor. I said, and that's where I stopped because I can't think of anything that rhymes with lieutenant governor. So you're saying she shouldn't be the lieutenant governor? Yes. Or, or you could just shoot me now. Like, what, are you, what are you saying? What are you asking? What are you, what are you seriously? What I'm not talking. Ta I'm talking about Miss Peaks, Dave. I'm sorry, Lulu. <clears throat> We're calling her Lulu now. Who, who's calling her Lulu? The administration. The administration has a position on her name. Why? Why would we? Why? Why is that even? Why? Why are you so calm? Are you sure you haven't been drinking coffee? The governor of this state, a man whose success is my sole responsibility, went on TV an hour ago and named as his lieutenant governor a person who's not only unqualified, completely unqualified for that job, but completely unqualified for any job I can think of. No, I don't know. I think she definitely has a career in television. You're doing it again. You're, you're doing it again, just like this morning. You're, 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 what? What? Sitting there in the middle of this disaster and you're enjoying it. I'm not enjoying it, Dave. I'm... Okay, I'm kind of enjoying it. I mean, come on. <laughs> you gotta admit, that Lulu, she was something else. Did you see what happened when she stepped in front of that camera? She was just... I don't know, she just turned on the way the words just flowed out of her mouth. Effortless, completely effortless. I mean, completely meaningless, but... Yes, but what? Nothing. She was completely... She was nothing but meaningless. She... Which is impressive. Context cards. Because... It's impressive because she hasn't even seen the cards. No, that's not impressive. It's not a skill to speak empty-headed phrases when you have an empty head. You're, you're talking like she's some politician you trained to go on TV and... Oh, my God. Oh, my, oh my God. That's it. You, you think she is? You think that Lulu is the politician you've been waiting for? The leader who's, who's just like us, who's... An hour ago, you thought Ned could be that guy. You could teach him to be clueless, but now you've found someone who's actually clueless. No, no, Dave, don't misunderstand. I'm not giving up on Ned. You are unbelievable. But what happened here today, that was something special. And not just her, the two of them together. I mean, think about it. If the public is looking for leaders who are absolutely, totally unprepared for office, we just found our dream team. Arthur, Arthur. Oh, Dave. What? You got up. Oh. Yeah, because the last time we came in here, you were lying yeah, yeah. on the floor in the fetal position. Yeah, I think we covered that. Arthur, these numbers. Yes. From the focus groups. They're good. Crazy good. They are. Amazing. Beyond amazing. They are life altering. Yeah. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm sorry. Are, are, what are we? What are we? What are we talking about? Or these are the reactions 
of the people who watched the interview? Yes, yes. Now remember, these are just voters in this state, but we're going to have to do some national polling, like immediately. I have never seen numbers like these. I would describe this person as someone who's just like me, 78%. As someone who's telling me the truth, 84%. As someone who is real, 91%. Wait, wait, wait. 91%. I mean, that is the most real anybody has ever been in any poll ever taken. Wait, this, these, this is from the interview that just happened? Yeah. And these are people's reactions to the governor. Oh. No, no, <laughs> oh. no. No, 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 no. No, 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 no. <laughs> no, no, these are the numbers for Louise. No, Lulu. Right, Lulu. We're calling her Lulu, Lulu now. now. What? We already looked at Ned's numbers, but I suggested... Because she's a genius. Thank you. She suggested, let's keep the focus groups a little longer to, to get their reactions to yes. Lulu. Lulu, yes. Isn't that brilliant? And these people identified with her. I mean, in ways I've never seen before. Okay. When asked if they could imagine inviting Lulu to their home for dinner, 36% could swear she'd already been there. I mean... It was like they were watching themselves on TV. They loved her. Dave, I think you're right. I just found the politician I've been looking for. This isn't happening. This is a nightmare. Tell, tell me, tell me this is a nightmare. A nightmare? Oh, Dave, you poor, sad, confused man. This is a dream come true. Look, what have you been fighting for since you got up this morning, huh? A chance for Ned Newley to keep his job. Well, guess what, Dave? Your wish is granted. Thanks to the political power of Lulu Peaks, nobody's going to try to kick him out of office now she's on his team. Now, here's the plan. We get the two of them back on TV ASAP and make it clear that he's endorsing her in the race for the new lieutenant governor. Oh, my God. And in fact, we launch her campaign right here. Her campaign? Yes. God bless your state constitution. You guys hold an election just to replace the governor. We get to run for office. We? we who's we? Ah, uh, uh, you missed that, Dave. Lulu hired me as her campaign manager. Paige is doing polling, and I've got some other folks coming in from D.C. When did this happen? When you were you lying, lying on the floor. Fetal position, fetal position, yes! Yeah. So, she announces her candidacy right here, and then she's off on a campaign tour of the state. With the governor by her side every step of the way. Yes. Every photo she's in, Ned is right there next to her. Or... You know, maybe in the background, sort of behind her, out of focus. I like it. I like it. But the message is, they're, they're a team. A match made in heaven. Newly and Lulu. Newly and Lulu. And I promise you, Dave, no one will ever mention that special election again. Ned's popularity will be through the roof. He'll be untouchable. Unstoppable. And the best part is he never has to speak a word. Just let Lulu do all the talking. She'll be the voice of the administration. And the face. The voice and the face. And what will what what will Ned be? Ned'll be working behind the scenes just the way he likes it. My God, it's perfect. Yeah, it kind of is, Dave. Yeah, it's, 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 except no, no, this isn't going to happen. Do this. Come on. We can't do this to people. To what people? To the people. To the, the public. We can't. We have a responsibility. Oh, do we? Yes. Are you joking? We have a responsibility to the voters. The lieutenant governor is the person who becomes governor. If... Okay. Okay. Look, this morning, you came in with this crazy plan where we convince people that Ned doesn't know how to do his job and that way he gets to keep his job, which he'll be great at doing as long as nobody knows that he knows what he's doing. And I'm pretty sure I got that right because I don't understand a single word of what I just said. With this new plan, electing Lulu, I, this is something different. Well, yes, this doesn't involve lying. This time, when we say she doesn't know how to do her job, she actually doesn't know how to do her job. Exactly. And that's what we can't do. We can't purposely put someone like that in office. 
We're, we're not putting her in office, Dave. It's an election. It's not up to us. It's up to the people. But we're the ones telling the people to vote for her. Because we think they'll want to vote for her. But if they vote for her, they'll elect her. And if they elect her, they'll get exactly what they want. But we know that's not what they should want. We know she is not who they should be voting for. Oh, oh we know that, do we? Yes! Yes! Don't pretend you actually think Lulu Peaks should be lieutenant governor. No, wait, 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 no. We know better than the people who the people should be voting for? <laughs> I don't want to alarm you, Dave, but I think you just made an argument against democracy. That's not what I was saying. No, 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 I think it is. You want me not to run someone for office because you're afraid people will like her and actually vote for her, and you don't trust the people to act in their own self-interest. You're telling me I've got a responsibility to only put certain candidates in front of the voters in case the voters don't know any better and mistakenly pick the person who speaks to them instead of the person who you've decided they ought to pick. Now, this is an election, Dave, and I say this in every campaign. If you don't like my candidate, then you find someone else. And I'll put my guy out there and you put your guy out there. And when election day arrives, it's not up to us. It's up to the people. We let the people decide. Now, Lulu Peaks is running for lieutenant governor. Day after tomorrow, she'll announce her candidacy live on Channel 3. And if you take my advice, the governor will be sitting next to her when she does. But if you got a better plan to keep Ned from being thrown out of office, Dave, then you go with that. You let me know, Dave. Now, Paige and I are going to go buy some balloons. We've got an election to win. Are they gone? Yeah. Let's go, Dave. What? What? Let's go. Is there a back exit? Is there a secret passageway? We can sneak out the balcony. We can jump off the balcony. Let's jump off the balcony, Dave. Ned, Ned, let's... I can't go on with this. I, I, I don't even know what I've done. I was just trying to... I just wanted to keep my job. I, I wanted to be able to do my job. So I, God, I made a pact with the devil. I signed the devil's book. I, I, I followed his instructions. I went on television and pretended I was an extra on Hee Haw. I told the world I was a brainless, vacant man with no idea how to be governor. And they believed me, Dave. Did Paige show you my results from the focus no. groups? No. The pu public is convinced, Dave. They're absolutely convinced I'm an idiot. And they're okay with that. And they're okay with Lulu, who's very sweet, but knows nothing about government. They're okay with two people who know nothing about government running the government. And I did that. And, and what's worse? Paige told me that people that the people liked Lulu more than they liked me because they thought she was just as ignorant as I was, but she had more enthusiasm. They thought I was stupid, Dave. But that I was unhappy about it. Ned. How do you where do you go from there? And now they want me to campaign for her. I know. Actually get her elected as lieutenant governor, which means if I ever die, she becomes governor, which means I can never die. I, I don't think that's what that means. I want to die, Dave. You don't want to die. I want to at least have the option. But my God, why the hell did we ever get involved in politics? <laughs> that's a good question. <sighs> Actually, you know, that, that, that is a good question. Why did you? Why, why, why did you get into politics? Because I believe that government, when when it worked right, could do something good. That's wait, Ned. That's it. What 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 you just said? The that exact thing you just said. Why don't you say that on television? Yes, we, we, we tell Arthur Vance he can launch Lulu's campaign from your office. Let him bring uh, his TV cameras in here and then look into that camera and tell the voters 
the things you want to do as governor, the kind of governor you want to be. Tell them why you want the job. You're saying I would talk yes. on television. Yes, but... Because that I, hasn't gone well so far. Just talk like you. I can't. I yeah, but in Larry Clark's first budget infrastructure spending, how much did you propose? $149 million, which was an increase of 17.3%. But I more than paid for that by eliminating the program for... Oh, just like that. You want me to talk like that on TV? Yes. And you think people will find that interesting? That's not the question, Ned. It's not about you being someone you think people want you to be. It's about you being you and letting people decide if that's what they're looking for. Let the people decide. That's what Arthur told me. That's what Arthur said. I put my guy out there and you put your guy out there and I think he's right. Ned, I think you should go on TV and talk like you and Lulu should talk like Lulu and then we leave it up to the people. Maybe they won't like it. Maybe they'll still kick you out of office, but this way at least they'll know who they're kicking out. So I show people who I am Yes. by talking about infrastructure spending oh, I mean, in the middle of Lulu's campaign launch. Yeah, it's not a, a perfect plan. No, but it is a plan. And you've got two days. You'll think of some way to make it work. I will. You never let me down, Dave. You, you stopped me from jumping off a balcony today. <laughs> That's the little things. So you figure out how to get me to talk on television, and I'll get to work rewriting this budget, okay? Uh, what's with that box? Oh, it's it's just uh, stuff from my office. I, I thought in case I never came back, there were a few things I'd like to have for sentimental purposes. My, my supplemental appropriations proposals. Oh, yeah, uh-huh. The first one, especially. My fix for Social Security. Oh, definitely, yeah. My fiscal transparency plan. That was special, huh? Ned, can I... Borrow this box? Paige, Paige, what do you think, huh? What do you think? About? The room, Paige, look around, look oh, at the room. Yes, sorry, I saw it earlier. Doesn't it get you excited? I mean, don't you feel a rush? The launch of a campaign, God, what's better than this? I, I, did you see Lulu? Did you talk to her? Yeah, we were going over a few things. She's like giddy today. She's not nervous at all. Yeah. She's not even aware there's something to be nervous about. Yeah, she's not aware of a lot of things. That's refreshing, isn't it? Well, it's, I mean, it's a little... What? Does it concern you at all that she's... She's what? Well, she just seems incapable of grasping basic concepts. Like like what? The three branches of government. Well, <laughs> that's a little complicated. The idea of government. Well, that's even more complicated. The idea of branches. Now, now Paige, believe me, Lulu knows everything she needs to know. Which is what? What does she know? She knows how to be Lulu, and that's all she needs. That's what people respond to. I'll tell you, I've been working with her, what, a day and a half, and I've never seen such raw talent. Her facility with language. I mean, not the English language, but maybe political language. That's, it's amazing. And those index cards we needed with Ned, she doesn't need them. There is not a carefully calibrated, poll-tested phrase in the world that can compete with whatever words come tumbling out of her mouth. But that's just show, Arthur. Show? I mean, that's just artifice. No, 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 no. It's real, and that's the magic of it. The things she says, even when you know they make no sense, when she says them, you believe them. Miss Peaks! The only thing I can't figure out, I mean, the truly crazy part is... 
No one ever realized this before. That woman's a born politician. Hey there. Hi. How are you? The natural. Yeah, Louise Peaks. <laughs> it's uncanny. Well, what is all this? Oh my goodness. Welcome to the official launch of your campaign. <laughs> Look at all this. It's unbelievable. Balloons and flags. Oh, can I take this one? Of course. <laughs> this is all so new to me. I didn't know anything about politics. Arthur said to me, it's like working in sales. It is. It's like the sales department of government, except, you know, Salesmen have to remember a lot of people's names. But if you're a politician, you can stand in front of a whole crowd and say, my friends, and everybody thinks you're talking to them. Oh, I'd love to call everybody my friends or my mellow Americans. Uh, fellow Americans. Oh, fellow Americans. I like mellow Americans. Okay. <laughs> and I love the color system. The color uh, system? Yes, like I said, uh, Lulu doesn't need me writing down phrases for her to memorize. She comes up with language all on her own. So, all I've done is define five different categories. They're different types of phrases and assigned each category a color. For instance, yellow. Tomorrow is a brand new day. Right. Thank you, Lulu. If I hold up a yellow card... We can do this. No problem. Right. Uh, and I'm sorry, I should explain first. The yellow represents um, something sunny or positive. So when I hold up the yellow card... There's no stopping us now. Lulu will say something optimistic. You are doing great, Lulu. Aw, oh, thanks. I like the yellow card. <laughs> but if I hold up the purple card... This is a very difficult time for all of us. She'll say something foreboding and dark. But if I hold up the green card, I'm sorry, the blue card. Gosh, I love this country. She'll say something patriotic. And if I hold up the green card. <gasps> oh, that sounds expensive. She'll say something money related. But the amazing thing is when we put them all together, I, Let's pretend we're doing an interview, Paige. You be the reporter. Now, uh, I want you to ask her any question you can think of, okay? No softballs. I want you to see what this lady can do. Okay. Okay. Uh, Miss Peaks. Hey there. Hi. How are you doing? Uh, I'm doing great. Well, you look great. Thanks. I wanted to ask you. Uh-huh. Governor Newley has expressed some concern about a shortfall in funding for public education in our state. Would you tell us how you, as Lieutenant Governor, would aim to solve a gap like that in the budget? Well, thanks for asking. And I'll tell you, uh... things look pretty grim right now. Sometimes I don't have enough money for lunch. But the future looks brighter than ever because this is America. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> what did I tell you? Oh my God. <laughs> Isn't that fun? Boy, if I knew politics was just saying whatever popped into your head, I would have gone into it a long time ago. Oh, oh, let's do the red card. What's the red card? Hello, folks. Dave, Governor. Hey there. Hi, Louise Peaks. Yes, it's good to meet you every time. <laughs> uh, we don't mean to interrupt. Oh, no, no, not at all. Not at all. We've been practicing the color system. Uh, the, the color system? You see these cards? Mm -hmm. I'm not a massage therapist. What? Oh, wait, is that because I held up the red card? I am not a potato farmer. What? That's right. When you hold up the red card, Lulu will give you a disclaimer like, um, 
I'm not a scientist. Aha. Uh -huh. This is helpful if you want her to avoid a question by explaining what she's not qualified to answer. Oh, and it's the easiest thing ever. All I have to do is say things I'm not. Uh huh. And the things I'm not, that's a lot of things. Uh huh. I really don't want to interrupt this, but uh, Rachel Parsons is here a little early. No problem. You show her in. We'll go back to the conference room until you're ready for us. Lulu? Okay. Governor? Oh, yeah, yeah. Let me just uh, ha have a word with Dave. You know, I think there are more things I'm not than things I am. Okay, before Rachel comes in, just to review. You just need to be yourself. Just be myself. It's just a conversation. If she asks you a question... I answer it. I can do that. You're going to be great, Ned. It's going to be great. It's, it's just a conversation. Just be myself. It's, it's going to be great. 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 Uh, Miss Parsons! Dave Riley. Oh, uh, welcome back. Thanks. Can you remember AC? Nice to see you again, AC. Uh, <clears throat> well, you guys are going to be friends, I can tell. Yeah. So, Dave Riley, the politician who's not good at politics. Right. The guy who doesn't mind me asking questions. That's me. In fact, something tells me you're hoping I'll ask questions today. Oh, I... I... About Lulu <clears throat> Peaks, about the governor, about a box of documents I found sitting on my desk two nights ago. Say, you wouldn't know anything about that, would you? Did you, uh, a, a, a box? Can I play poker with you sometime? How did you not know that I would know that was you? Who else has access to Ned Newley's papers? You're the only person who works for the guy. I swear, I talk to politicians every day, begging them to drop the veneer and be straight with me for once in their lives. But you, it's like I want to teach you how to lie. You really play poker? Uh, yes. Why? Why did you ask me that? I don't know. Uh, so did you? Uh, did you look in the box? Mm, we're not talking about the box, Dave. You don't get to anonymously drop off a bunch of documents and then quiz me on my reaction to them, and you don't get to steer me towards certain questions you want me to ask the governor. That's not how this works. Last time I was here, I let Arthur Vance tell me what I couldn't ask. This time, maybe I'll ask whatever I want. Okay, great. I'm not saying that's gonna make your guy look good. But no, I know. And you're okay with that? You're but, no. the one person in politics who wants reporters to ask damaging questions. I had thought you'd like that. Well, who says I don't like it? Well, you sound kind of angry. Well, you sound kind of nice. And that's another thing you don't like about me? No, it's a thing I do like about you. Why do you yell at me when there's something you like about me? You're an idealist, Dave. You want me to be the kind of reporter who... You want me to be the kind of reporter I want me to be. But if I defy my boss and just ask the governor and Lulu Peaks what I want to ask them, what I ought to ask them, then I will lose my job. Or worse, I'll end up hosting the morning show, interviewing reality TV stars and celebrity chefs. Do you want that to happen? No. Neither do I. So I'm not going to, I mean, I just can't get, I, damn it, AC? Yeah. How close, uh, how long till we're on the air? Seven minutes. I've got to do some thinking. Thanks. Why did you ask me if I play poker? I honestly don't know. All right. And how many reporters did you leak those papers to? Just you. You were the only one. Okay. First of all, thank you. And secondly, you're supposed to say what papers? Right, sorry, I... I don't know what are you talking about? Oh my god, you are the worst liar ever. That's another thing you like about me? Yes! Ugh. Oh, uh, Dave, uh, I, I gotta get my microphone on. Uh, What's that, yeah, your mic? Yeah. 
Yeah, Paige told me to come in and have AC put my mic on. Uh, uh, that's fine. You get set up. I'll tell Arthur we're almost ready, okay? I'm going to clip this mic to the lapel of your jacket, sir. Okay, last time I wasn't wearing a jacket. Yeah, and the mic pack goes on the inside pocket of your jacket? Last time it was in my pants pocket. Yeah, but this time you're wearing a jacket. Okay, clearly you two are going to be just fine. I'm not sure I even need this mic. I mean, even when there's not a camera, I'm not great at talking. Which is maybe something you and I have in common. Uh-huh. But you see people talk on camera every day. You probably think it's ridiculous for me to be nervous about being on TV. Wow. What? Well, what does that mean? I I'm just saying. What? That I should be nervous? No. What does that mean? I I'm just saying. No, you're not. You're not saying anything. Well, the last time you went on TV... I look like an ass. Yeah, but look. The truth is, most people who go on TV make asses of themselves. Do they? Yeah. God, yeah. Okay, well, I'm not sure this is helping. Especially politicians. Yeah, definitely not helping. You know, most politicians are asses to begin with, so... Ah, see, this is why I don't talk to people. No, I wouldn't disagree with that. There's an awful lot of idiots in politics. Though I don't know why that is. Because no sane, intelligent person would want to work in government. Okay. Just gonna zip it. Why would you say that? Forget it. No, tell me. Why would no intelligent person want to work in government? Because... What is government? I mean, what does it do, right? What, what good, honest purpose does it serve? I, I suppose it has to exist and always will exist, but government? Politics? What does that have to do with, and I'm sorry, real life? It has nothing to do with my life. I pay my taxes, I bitch about it, but I pay them. And then all that money gets spent on whatever. Whatever politicians spend money on, when they're not busy trashing other politicians or looking into my camera and lying every time they open their mouths. I, why should I pay attention to that? Why should I care? Life is crowded enough as it is. I got a brother who's out of work, needs help paying the rent. I, I got a friend who's in and out of the hospital. My wife and I just trying to make it to the weekend so we have time to spend with our two boys who are awesome and important. That's real life. Government. Government's over there making a lot of noise if you listen to it. But, but why listen to it? I I'm sorry about your friend in the hospital. Yeah. I, I don't know why I brought that up. Thanks. Well, real life, like you said. Yeah. What kind of work is your brother in? He was teaching high school in Fairview. Got laid off. Was that a, a public school? You gonna get him a job, Governor? I honestly was just wondering. I don't know why I brought that up. I asked you a question, and you answered it. That's what Dave keeps telling me about this interview with Rachel. It's just a conversation. Yeah, but you know they're just lying to you to make you feel better, right? <laughs> okay, I am never speaking again. Well, so are we, AC? Minute and 40 seconds out. Okay, here we go, here we go. Let's do this, Lulu. I'll be right over here, okay? Okay, looks good. Nettie, you all set? I don't know. You're gonna do great. I'll do great. Be yourself. Just be myself. We're live in one minute, folks. Oh, uh, okay. Uh, uh, Rachel? You wanna know what decision I've made? I, I do, but... You don't get to ask me that. I was thinking I don't... I shouldn't ask you that. It could be I haven't made a decision. Right. But you shouldn't know that either. 
if it helps, I really feel like I don't know anything. 30 seconds. Dave, stay. Right, stay out of the shot. Stay out of the shot. Are you using the color system too? Uh, no. I've been practicing it so much. Now every time a thought enters my brain, I see a color. 15 seconds. What what color are you seeing now? Oh, there aren't any thoughts in my brain right now. We're live in five, four, three. Thank you, Charlie. I'm Rachel Parsons, coming to you live from the governor's office, where I once again have the privilege of sitting here with the state's new governor, Ned Newley. And how are you doing, sir? I'm going to do great. going to do great. I, I think you are. Just being myself. Just being myself. Okay. Okay, Dave, well, you're not even supposed to speak. Maybe we'll come back to the governor a, a little later. Uh, or maybe we won't. <laughs> Or maybe we will. Oh God. What the hell was that? Oh, God. But let's turn now to Miss Lulu Peaks. Hey there, hi. Who is a candidate for lieutenant governor. That's right, I am. And who is officially launching her campaign today. Isn't it exciting? Well, it is certainly impressive how the governor's office has been decorated for the occasion, including, if AC can get that in the shot, a large poster declaring, Lulu, she's just like us. A reference, perhaps, to the fact that you have never been involved in politics before, Miss P. Oh, I sure haven't. Could you tell us, then, why you've decided to run for office now? Well, I'll tell you. Here we go. This is a rough time. People have it tough. Folks are hurting. They're down in the dumps. It's a sad day, but I've got a happy feeling about this. Something great is just around the corner. The people of this country, they're the best. That's why I believe in America. Okay, um, let me try to pin you down on a few specifics. Uh, could you give us maybe one or two things you hope to accomplish as Lieutenant Governor? The skies are filled with dark clouds. Okay. I think it might rain soon. Uh... I'm not a meteorologist. But I know the sun is going to shine. Anything is possible. You could win the lottery. This is a land of freedom. And I'm proud to call it home. Well, thank you, Miss Peaks, for those words. Oh, where? Uh, oh, and a voice in the studio is reminding me to ask you about your first campaign rally being held on Saturday. Is that oh, right? That sounds fun. Oh, I'm. Um, I'm sorry, I've just been corrected. I wasn't supposed to ask you about the rally. I was just supposed to announce it because apparently now I'm working for the campaign. What are you doing? <laughs> and now a different voice in my ear is telling me to stop editorializing and just do what I'm being paid to do. Thanks, boss. Yeah, you should listen to that voice, Miss Parsons. But I'm thinking, what am I being paid to do? And also, how many chances will I get to interview a governor? Well, this will be your last chance. My thoughts exactly. So, why not go for broke and act like a journalist on my last day as a journalist? Governor Newley. Just a conversation, just a conversation. Channel 3 News received an interesting package two days ago. A box containing documents pertaining to the running of state government. Oh, what the hell is this? In that box, along with a lot of official papers, were quite a few handwritten notes and memos from you to Governor Clark and other government officials. Dave? I'd like you to take a look at a few of these notes, if you would. Oh, yeah. Come on, Ned. Oh, I see. I get it. This is your doing, isn't it, Dave? This is a memo you wrote last year during budget negotiations. A memo about the budget? This is so compelling. These are your words, Governor. Can you read them for us? Um, regarding the pending interstate commerce legislation, it's my calculation if we increase subsidies at the rate proposed, 
we'll see a significant budget deficit by year three, if not sooner. And again, you wrote that correct? Uh, yes. And do you recognize these memos, also from you, on the tuition at state universities and addressing the concerns of National Guardsmen and measuring the quality of our drinking water? Oh, great television. Uh, these were written by you, Governor? Yes, these are me. Great. Now, jumping ahead to two days ago, this is a statement put out by Arthur Vance, a political consultant who I believe works in your office. Oh, Arthur, yeah, he's the guy holding my cards. This is something Mr. Vance wrote to describe you, Governor. I will have her head. Would you read that for us? Uh, most of us view government as something we'll never fully understand. <clears throat> Ed Newley is one of those people, a governor who's just like us. Okay, so a statement from your office describing you as someone who doesn't understand government. Mr. Newley, would you say that's an honest description of the man who wrote all of the memos that I just showed you? Most of us view government as something we'll never fully understand. I, I, I'm sorry, I, I don't mean to ignore your question, Rachel, but I'm realizing that's what you were saying, AC, isn't it? Um, Governor? AC? Yeah, I guess. I, I'm sorry, AC was talking to me about how most people don't know what government is or what it does. Did you say AC was talking to you? Yeah, and, and I'm just thinking that's sort of the key, isn't it? That you don't know what it does. Because I know. I know what government does. I know everything government does. I know the budget of every department. I, I know how much we spent plowing the highway last winter and how much we're projecting we'll spend next winter. What is he doing? Being Ned. I know how much snow the NOAA, the, the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration, is predicting we'll get during ski season. 94 inches in Pine Lake, 88 at Copper Ridge. Okay. But you don't know that, do you? I mean, you're not supposed to know that. Your job is to know about that camera you're operating. You could probably take that thing apart and put it back together again. Good, actually. But you don't know how to plan through the logistics of 1,600 miles of roads, do you? Do you, AC? No. And 99% of the rest of the people in this state don't know how to do that. So the problem is, if all these voters who know nothing about plowing elect leaders who are just like them, what do we do when it snows? God, I love that man. So you're saying we shouldn't elect leaders who are just like us? That's right, we shouldn't. I mean, I should, but Luis. Uh, Hi there. I'm, I'm doing all right, actually. Uh, but Luis, do you vote? Oh, no, no, I'm not a voter. Hey, that's another thing I'm not. Oh, my God. And AC, you don't vote either, do you? No, no. And I don't blame you. If you think government is just a place to send your taxes every April, then who cares who runs it? But that's not what government is, which I probably should have told you earlier. Can I ask what it is? Government? Oh, I was just going to ask the same thing. Well, government, it, in this country anyway, in a democracy, government is just the word we use to describe the things all of us collectively have made a decision to do together. The kinds of things that none of us can do on our own. The, the people of this statement, we're very independent, you know. Oh, I'm not. <gasps> Red card! Right, but, but generally, <laughs> Americans take pride in saying, I can take care of myself just fine. And we can. But what we can't do, what, what none of us individually can do is make sure there's a road that gets can get us from Bristol to Burlington, right? Or or make sure that that road is paved and properly lit. That's not something any one person can do. But we can decide collectively to make that happen. To build the road and get to hire the pavers and uh, put in the light bulbs and to pay for all of it so that 
I can drive out to see my sister in Columbus and an ambulance can get somebody to the hospital and and okay. if a family owns a lumber mill in in Milford Falls they can haul that lumber to anywhere in the state or in anywhere in the country doing things together that we can't do on our own in order to benefit all of us that's government does that make sense yeah, yeah, it does. Actually, by the way, yes, he taught in the public school. My brother, the one who lost his job, there were cutbacks. They didn't have enough money for all the children. Yeah, I think I've got a way to restore that funding in the next budget. I mean, if I'm still the governor. Well, I hope you are. Okay, this is the most I have ever heard AC talk. I'm sorry. I, I, I didn't mean to. I... I haven't let Louise say hardly anything, and she's been, really been working very hard. Oh, I'm having fun listening. I feel like I'm learning things or watching other people learn things. But you should ask her another question. She's really very good at this. Okay. Um, Miss Peaks, we've just heard the governor's thoughts on the kind of leaders we should be electing. Can you give the voters a reason to vote for you? Well... I'll tell you. I love America. I love the mountains out that window. I love the oceans and the beaches. I love how big this country is. There are so many people in it. But I also love the places where there aren't any people. I love the flag. I love the 4th of July. I love marching bands and the fireworks. I've got a good feeling about today. I've got a good feeling about next week. I think the future is full of hope. I'm not Ned. I'm not you, Rachel. I'm not a country western singer. I am not a gynecologist. No, no. But I believe in America, and I'm looking forward to tomorrow. How long does this usually take? Uh. Well, if we're lucky, maybe uh, maybe five more minutes. With some focus groups, there's a lot of follow-up and discussion, but these are just these are just basic questions. Uh, I'm sure Paige has the responses by now. She's just, you know, at this point, she's compiling the data. Can we just walk back to the conference room and ask her? No, 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 no. You never rush a poster, okay? Rushing a poster is like is like rushing a master chef. If you walk into that kitchen at the very moment that he's, you know, um, just when the chef is, um, is okay, I have, I have no idea where I'm going with this analogy. You're nervous. I didn't think Arthur Vance could get nervous. Well, Dave, your, your guy did a number on me in that interview. He was comfortable, articulate, he made sense, he looked right into the camera. He was, he was talking to the cameraman, so he was looking directly into the camera, so... So when he asked, do you know what government is? Everybody at home said, no, no, government, governor, I, I don't. And then he told him, like, it, so, it was uh, genius. You're, you're, you think the numbers will be good for him? I don't know what I think. I mean, I, I thought Lulu started out strong and then she got a little lost, but then her thing at the end, I, I mean, that was poetry. But the thing is, if you listen to him and you listen to her, I think you'd have to pick one or the other. I mean, it was like a debate. Well, you put your guy out there, I put my guy out there, and we let the people decide. Well, gee, Dave, I, I didn't think you were going to start listening to me. Are the numbers in yet? No. No. God, this is unbearable. I, I never imagined my fate would lie in the hands of people who watch television at one o'clock in the afternoon. This is like waiting for a... It's like waiting for a jury to come back with a verdict. Yes! You don't know whether they're going to find you guilty of... 
of murder. Right, or or guilty or guilty of loitering. Yeah, uh, although uh, it, it wouldn't be. It, it'd be guilty of murder or not not guilty. Not guilty of the murder, but guilty of the loitering. Huh? Boy, this is not a good day for metaphors. Hey there, hi, how's everybody doing? We're all uh, uh, a little, a bit on. <laughs> Why, you guys, we did great. Didn't anybody tell you? Well, what, what, what do you mean? What have you heard? Have you, have you talked to Paige? Well, I talked to everybody in the building. The people in the cafeteria, the guys in security, they all watched it on TV, and we're a hit. They loved you, Ned. They huh? just think you're the greatest. They're like, that's our governor. You got fans. Oh, they all said you're a lot better than Gary Hart. Uh, Gary Hart? Larry Clark? That's it. And they really liked all the things I said at the end. They were, honestly, I think they were a little moved by it. Well, it was really something. Wasn't it, huh? I felt it, you felt it, the cafeteria workers felt it. That, right, the security guards? The delivery guy from Subway? The, the delivery guy? He wanted my autograph. Oh no, wait. It's just that I paid with a credit card. Uh-huh. Uh, anybody want numbers? Oh, how'd we do? Are they good? Oh, they're good. Good for who? For who? Good, good, good for who? For anybody who appeared on television today. They loved the governor. They loved Lulu. I mean, honestly, I think that cameraman could run for office if he wanted to. If he can forget all about the special election, the state is thrilled with their new governor and the new candidate for lieutenant governor. Uh, Lulu is not running for lieutenant governor anymore. She, she's, she's not? These numbers at the end, Paige, they're national? Yes, they are. <laughs> Miss Peaks, uh, <clears throat> this is one very small state in a very big country and your national numbers are telling me it's time to dream a little bigger. Oh. Set our sights a little higher. Okay. And it just so happens I got a call this morning from Washington, D.C. The president has an opening in his cabinet. Uh-oh. No, 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 that's a good thing. Oh. It's very good. Because I was thinking... No, no. Termites. Yeah, termites. Uh, no, no, no. It's a job opening. He's looking for recommendations for a new Secretary of the Interior. Secretary of the... Of the Interior. It's not like being a secretary here. You'd be running a whole department. Okay. And I think you'll like it. National Park Service, Bureau of Land Management. Remember what you said about loving the mountains and loving the oceans and the beaches? But well, we share that video with a few dozen senators and you're a shoe-in. Oh. I could definitely be Secretary of the Inferior. Interior. Oh, interior. Wait, didn't you say it was a job about the outdoors? Yes, the Department of the Interior manages the outdoors, which pretty much sums up Washington, D.C. <clears throat> so, gentlemen, my work here is done. It has been a privilege and an education to see a man put himself out there as a capable guy, the knowledgeable guy, and still win the public's approval? Who knew that could happen? But the next time I meet a politician who actually understands the job he's running for, okay, that's never going to happen. But if it does, Dave, I'm giving him your number. Thank you. Uh, Paige, Lulu, I will meet you in the lobby. And I'll tell you, my friends, everybody will be asking about this back in D.C. How a governor went from mumbling his way through the oath of office to perfectly explaining the purpose of government in just three days. And you will naturally tell them it was all your doing. Well, how about that, Dave? For the first time ever, you and I had the same exact idea. I will see you fellas in the news. Well... Goodbye, Ned, and goodbye, uh, Dave. uh, Dave. I want you to know it's not easy for me to leave here because this is the longest I have ever held on to a job. Well, good luck to you, Lulu. It's a big world out there.
and they're putting me in charge of all of it. All of the outdoors. Well, all the mountains. I don't think that's actually and the prairies. The, um, and the oceans. White with foam. What's that? Weren't you a uh, quoting the song? What song? God bless America. Oh, amen to that. Good luck to you, Louise. Good luck to you. Okay. 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 Uh, Dave, listen, I had no idea Arthur was planning on us making a hasty exit like that. No, no, no I know. And I haven't even mentioned, I mean, he kind of offered me a job, uh, like awesome. wherever he goes kind of thing. That's amazing. Yeah, I mean, you know, working with him, that's an incredible opportunity. And his kind of politics is my kind of politics. I know. Which isn't your kind of politics. No, it isn't. <laughs> but what I want to tell you is, I mean, what you and Ned did here today, like, that's the most exciting thing I've ever seen. And it meant something to these people. I mean, they felt something, they understood something. So what I wanna ask you is, can I work with you guys? Can I be a part of this? Paige, you're the first. Please, I'd be thrilled to have you. All right, I'm gonna go tell Arthur. Oh, and uh, Rachel Parsons wanted me to give you this. She was uh, kind of hanging outside in the hallway, just outside your office. Oh. Yeah. Hey, great job today, Chief. This is going to be good. Uh, Mrs. Parsons? Dave Riley. Are you in trouble with your boss? Well, I was, uh, but then he fired me. What? <laughs> yeah, because Arthur Vance told him to. But then our station manager got wind of it, so he fired my boss and gave me my job back. But then Arthur Vance got my ex-boss a job at CNN, so television news is still a pillar of integrity. Speaking of which, when we first met, I went on a little rant about how people in the news business shouldn't get too friendly with people who we're supposed to cover. Right. Which would clearly include you and me. Right. You seem not at all troubled by the suggestion that we shouldn't be friendly. No, I, I'm just, I'm trying to be agreeable. This is one instance where you not being agreeable would be better. Okay, then uh, screw your journalistic code of ethics, Miss Parsons. Uh, I like you and I think you like me, and though I have never played poker, somehow the idea of seeing you at a poker table it inexplicably turns me on. So I think we should get a drink. Okay, well that can't happen. I knew you were gonna say that. And we never had this conversation. Okay, I'll call you later. You don't have my number. You left me your card. I have no idea what you're talking about. Ned. Sorry I wandered off. I, I just I just can't stop looking out these windows. Yeah, it's an amazing view. But I think every time every time I've looked out there, all I was seeing were the mountains and the sky. But today, for the first time, I noticed the buildings, the, the city, all those people. And up in the mountains, as the lights start to come on, you realize there's people up there, too. A lot of people in this state, Dave. And I just got on television and said to all of them, Hey, whatever we want to accomplish, we can do that. Sure we can. You stick with me, folks, and we'll do big things together. It's kind of a big boast, isn't it? The only boast you made is that you know what government is supposed to do and that you'll aspire to do it well. You afraid people are going to believe you? Yeah, a little. <laughs> well, they should. 
Because you're gonna work hard, Ned. Never known you to do anything else. First thing tomorrow, you're gonna finish that budget? Oh, I already finished it. Why? When? That's, I did it last night. You're a nut. It's what I do. You found money for those school kids. Yeah, that was easy. And took money back from the cows? I don't have anything against the cows. <laughs> I, oh! I know. I also had a thought about Medicare participation. Here, are you heading out? Uh, yeah. Well, you know, the, the projection that more and more doctors will leave the program? Right. Well, I hear in Maryland they've been trying something with their hospitals and physicians groups that's really worth taking a look at. Well, how about that? What I mean, I love the country, but I can't stand to see.